Hey, and thank you for clicking play. Still going through the do guy. It's the day after I recorded last week's video, but you'll be watching this a week later. Um, you would have seen me unwrap this fantastic machine. And this, which do guide, by the way, I forgot to mention, is a snake that we find in Australia. Um, and you'll be pleased to hear that, mo like most snakes in Australia, is highly poisonous and deadly. Um, I think I've seen one, maybe two, since all the time I've lived here. Uh, but this does actually hit you a bit like a snake bite. So maybe that's why they gave it the name. Good stuff, though. Here it is. Now, don't be fooled by the fact that, so the A1200, um, don't be fooled by the fact that the lights are not on. Um, as mentioned last week, um, the, uh, the ground wire for the lights seems to be fractured, so that's an easy fix. I've tested them with a multimeter, um, and it should be easy to bring back to life. But this is the machine that I bought for myself and then gave to the wife, if you didn't watch that video, to give me for birthday, Christmas, 25th wedding anniversary, everything like that, because it wasn't cheap. But the reason why I grabbed it is A, because I missed out on it when it first went up for sale, um, and Godfrey bought it, but because I misunderstood the market at the time, 100% on me. But it's probably worked to my favor, even though I paid more for it, um, this now has more in it than when I could have originally bought it. So as detailed last week, this is an Amiga 1200 with the original, obviously onboard two meg of RAM, don't get away from that. Working floppy drive, now in um, the original case, in a original case. This motherboard, we believe, has been recapped by Marvin Drugsma. Um, and as you can see, it's fully functioning. Um, it has a brand new membrane. Um, and it has a, um, sorry, ACA um, 1233N. I always forget the number. Um, so an ACA 1233N. Um, expansion card accelerator in the trapdoor. So it's just a trapdoor add-on for this, but that takes it up from the stock o, um, O2O processor running at 14 megahertz. So just to put things in perspective, because I know some of you guys, especially um, some of you that are friends of mine from childhood, I know you, you probably don't know this, um, but you know, the standard Amiga runs on a 68,000 uh, Motorola CPU running at seven megahertz. When they upgrade, it's, it's a 16 bit machine. We all knew that back in the day. And generally, they're upgraded to one meg of RAM total. The 1200 out of the box comes with a Motorola 68020 processor. So that's what I mean when I say 020. And that runs at 14 megahertz. And the entire memory bus and everything is basically a true 32 bit system, unlike the 500. So it already runs faster out of the box and it comes stock with two meg of RAM. Some of them had a hard drive in and some did not. Um, the A500, the hard drive was obviously an external add-on. They could be done internally to these and also the A600s. This one with the accelerator card, well that's running an 030 processor. And so stock, we're talking 020 processor at 14 megahertz. This <laughs> is an 030 chip running at 42 megahertz. Now, uh, this isn't the comparison video, there will be a proper comparison video, but just as a quick comparison, when I jumped back in the day from an Amiga 500 with one meg of RAM, I jumped to a used PC with four meg of RAM. This out of the box would have had two meg of RAM. This currently has 130 meg of RAM total. <laughs> that would have been insane. What would you have even used the RAM for? Now, of course, it's funny to use the term modern day Amiga, but because things have been added to the Amiga operating system, such as WHD load, that's a way of running games from within Workbench that didn't exist back in the day, and that chews up memory. So that's why on these modern expansions, RAM is so important. Plus, RAM is now a lot cheaper than it used to be back in the day. How many times have I said back in the day? I don't know. We should be playing drinking games and taking a shot every time somebody says back in the day, but that may end badly. So what I wanted to do today after that 
brief explanation of what this machine is, is just show you some of the stuff that it's come preloaded with. So it has a compact flash hard drive on, so not an original mechanical hard drive, but one of the modern updates you can do is actually use a compact flash um, card which are pretty much an obsolete technology in their own right, but they come into their own in retro computing because you can use them to emulate, essentially, a hard drive, so that's great. Plus it has a working floppy drive. There's a few things I wanna look at. What does Workbench 3 look like, which is what this is running, and I never had back in the day. And, um, Let's have a quick look at what one of the games I've been really curious about, Alien Bree 3D2 looks like. And also Banshee, which is an AGA game as well. I wanna see what that looks like as well. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, now, first thing to point out, this is actually running through Composite. Um, and when I do do a proper comparison video, we'll talk about the outputs. But simply because I could use R2B to SCART, but I don't wanna upset the A500. <laughs> unplugging it um, that's how paranoid I am about old kit and um, look at least the a1200 has you know composite out um, that's color unlike the a500 Godfrey very kindly supplied the machine with the mouse from an a600 um, which correct me if I'm wrong but is, is essentially the same as the one you would have got with an a1200 I might be wrong there I think it was slightly upgraded actually feels kind of small compared to the tank mouse but it actually feels quite nice and this works great and he also included a black power supply this isn't a modern power supply this is essentially what I think they call the SCOM power supply but this is 100% a Commodore machine and it's running 3.0 ROMs SCOM obviously being 3.1 why do I know all this stuff so this is Workbench, Godfrey had already set this up. One of the things I will do going forwards is get a full set of discs I wanna get and a full set of books. And I will get another compact flash card so that I can set up the operating system from scratch as a stock machine. So that's, that's um, something we will do. But let's have a look. So under work, obviously the obligatory thing to do is not under work, uh, must be under Workbench. Just going to tools. And here we go. We have to do sysinfo. So today, look, I haven't returned it to stock. Um, this is the machine as it runs. Let's have a look at um, memory. And we can see there we've got lots and lots of memory. 128 meg it sees there, but it does actually see the full 30. Um, but yeah. So it says 128 there. Um, and what else do we want to do? Speed. And you can see that it's seeing the 030, which is great. I have, I'm not going to do it today, but I have tried removing the card to make sure it sees the 020 and the standard two mega of RAM, and it does do that. So when I do speeds, what we're we looking at? 9,163 dry stones. Um, and it's got the speed here and we are way above a standard 14 megahertz 1200 which would be there and we are way out here um, where's the cpu megahertz cpu 68030 running at 42.7 megahertz absolutely insane here's an a600 which is essentially the same as an a500 way down here here is the standard a1200 14 megahertz and this is where we are so that is great. Right, out of sysinfo, and let's jump into gaming. We've got Gloom Deluxe. Should you have a quick look and see how that runs? Because Gloom Deluxe is very task intensive. Let's have a look. Is the volume on on this machine? No. There we go. One player, start game. Don't know what the controls are. Right, so that's like that. How do you go full screen? Full screen. There we go. All right, and let's just go quick game. I need to look at the controls. Oh, maybe they're on joystick. 
I didn't realize you could do joystick. Let's do joystick. I've got the uh, Archer plugged in. Not usually the way I play an FPS, but let's, let's see what that's like. So I've got the Archer plugged in. And so this is the, uh, oh, look at that. So how does that, that doesn't run bad. Keep in mind, Gloom Deluxe is in extremely task intensive. This would not run like this on the standard A1200. There is no friggin' way. That, I'm gonna enjoy playing that. So there's no way, I was about to say there's no way you'd have a game as good as that on the A500. But then we can have Dread coming. <laughs> and that changes the whole game. But we do have here Alien Breed 3D2. Let's see how it runs. This is a real O3 running at 42 megahertz. Let's see how this actually runs Alien Breed 3D2. So on a reduced window, not a problem. I'm on, and I'm actually excited about going through both Alien Breed 3D and Alien Breed 3D2. I'm really looking forward to that to that journey. Because obviously I never had these games back in the day. So this is entirely playable. I actually don't know what button did that. That button, all right. But let's see what happens when I go full screen. There's no way that's as smooth. There's no way. So I thought maybe there was something wrong with the accelerator. Maybe this machine isn't seeing the accelerator properly. So I asked on Discord of a few people and they confirmed this is how hard it is to run Alien Breed 3D2 in full screen. And this is how slow this runs. So that's quite interesting. This would have been unplayable on a standard 020. Absolutely unplayable. This though is very similar to how I would have played Doom on my U386 DX. This is a close comparison to that gaming experience and you know having to compromise you know depending on where I am in a level of going well do you know what I need a bit of speed here so let's come out of full screen and let's play it like this because this is playable and then when I want to look at some pretty graphics, I can't play a game and not, not play the game. Um, you know, and then when I want to look at some pretty graphics, and I missed him, whoa! Then I would up full screen and just see what that environment looks like before then going back to, to windowed. And look, that's the judge of it. I'm, even though I'm not doing this for gaming's sake, I'm doing this for a video. I'm there, I've got to play, and I've got to play well. Right, let's move on to another game. So when I played, uh, everybody said, when I was asking what AGA game should I play, this is back when I had the Raspberry Pi 400, uh, running Pi Mega 1.5, everybody said, you must try Banshee. But I couldn't get it to work properly. Um, the controls were all over the place on Pymega. I don't know why. So hopefully this will work on here. Right, please work controls. Yes, this is looking good. This, I mean, I'm gonna have to use the RGB to SCART to see the real definition that I'm dealing with here. This is, the composite's gonna be letting it down. But other than that, I mean, I can see that this is a high resolution. Ah. Okay, holding down is easier. This micro switch joystick is doing the job beautifully, I must say. What does auto fire do? Oh, that's faster. Is that cheating? Thoughts in the comments, is auto fire cheating? Oh, bugger. Not if you die anyway. 
It reminds me of Midway, which is a fantastic movie. Watched that the other night with the wife. Um, oh, so hitting that changes what it gives you. I really need some weapon power-ups here. So this is the first time I've ever played Banshee. I think Dave Retro Games played badly. He was one of the first to say, you must try Banshee. Dave, frigging great suggestion. This is fantastic. There was another World War II flight fighter. I forget what it was called. Not 1943, there was another one that I had on the Amiga that I really enjoyed. Um, actually, it might have even been on the Spectrum. The interesting thing about that, I'm going to be honest here, as my first impression of playing some games, not first impression, but first impression on video, of playing some games on the A1200, is this. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be blunt here. Look, this is a fantastic machine, right? But playing Banshee there, as an example of a vertical scrolling shoot em up, I don't see a big enough leap from playing Swiv on an A500. <laughs> Someone's gonna have to fill in the gaps there for me. I know, I'm assuming because it's AGA, it's gonna be a higher resolution, more colors, whatever. If I had Swiv on the A500, would seeing this game in the shop be enough? I don't think so. I honestly don't think so. So for me, it's more about things like um, Gloom Deluxe, which I know wasn't officially out back then, Alien Breed 3D, Alien Breed 3D 2. I think those would have been the draw cards, but not if Dread was on the scene. If Dread had come out back in the day, well then you'd have more advanced games on this. Of course you would. So then you'd be going, yeah, but look, you can have floor textures, you can have ceiling textures, you can have multiple floor heights. So, but it would have been a close race, wouldn't it? So there you have it. Look, I am so friggin' over the moon to have an A1200 at long last. But yeah, I'm gonna really enjoy unpacking this machine. Will it replace the A500 for me? Well, let's tell a story there because at the end of the day, there was another one I could have bought, and the reason why the guy was getting rid of it was because he has more nostalgia for the A500 than the A1200. Godfrey that sold me this machine, keeping in mind his A500 has an ACA accelerator on that as well with a hard drive. So it's almost doing everything this can do except AGA games. Everything else his A500 can do, it just lacks AGA games with the accelerator that he's got hanging off the expansion port. And here's nostalgia is with the A500. I have zero nostalgia for the A1200 because I never had one. This for me is a journey and it will be an ongoing journey of discovering an alternate timeline where instead of jumping to PC, I jump to an A1200 and I'm excited about that. So I don't think this machine is gonna leave my ownership for a long, long time. I'm excited about owning this machine but there's no way in hell it replaces. <laughs> I'm not faking this. I get emotional every time I look at this machine. This is my childhood. And that, for me, and I'm beginning to understand that it's different for everybody. People are in this hobby for different reasons. But for me, it's a, this is just a box of memories. And that in itself, it doesn't even have to be turned on. It just has to sit there this is the 90s, this is my teenage years. There is no friggin' way this replaces that, I'm sorry. It's a great machine, it's a fantastic machine, and I love it, but I don't love it as much as this. <laughs> the A500 wins, the A500 is friggin' fantastic. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. I don't usually say that. I don't know why I keep rambling. I don't know, have I said back in the day recently? I just did then. Bye. Um, I think there's some demos on here as well. What's under S? Now somebody once said, um, one of the 
best demos to run. What was it called? What's that about? Does anybody know? Matt! <laughs>